Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In this episode, I'm going to be styling and repositioning all my plants. If you've watched my other videos before this, you'll know that I have actually styled the home and then I got renovated it and then more plants also came in. So all the plants are in this array now. I'm gonna give you a tour of what the plant look like now. There's also a balcony behind me that I have actually recently built. So I'll walk through that with you. There's gonna be some plants going out there as well. It's an additional add-on, a very last minute add-on. But to start my day, I use this mosquito repellent. This is one that I've designed on my own. It's basically just carrier oil with lemongrass, rosemary, and lavender. It's a nice blend and I cannot share with you the ratio unfortunately, but you can absolutely make this yourself at home wherever you are. I do not export. It's, I'm not allowed to export because I don't have the export permit for this. So if you're living abroad, I can't. But then this is something that I use every day. It actually prevents mosquitoes from attacking me. It turns off their sense of smell. It messes with their hormones. So they actually hate this scent naturally. So this is a good way to repel mosquitoes without using DEET and other chemicals that may be harmful for your skin. But if you live in Indonesia, I'm gonna link in the description of where you can get this on Tokopedia under my brand Seven Sages. So literally you would just have a few drop of this in your hands like so, rub it and then, hang on, am I gonna be in frame? And then yeah, this is my most vulnerable part. I get bit on my calves and ankle most of the time. I don't know why, they just love that part of me. It's very, very moisturizing and nourishing for the skin and it smells amazing. So yeah, I'm ready to do some work now. All right, we've got a long day ahead of us and this video is gonna be hours long, I promise you. It's gonna be amazing. These are all plant care tools, potting medium, like moisture meters, wires, bondage tools for plants, <laughs> atrallisis, and there's a lot of Yakult bottles here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna organize them and throw away with those that I don't need. And then I will have to put them up in, onto these shelves. These plants do not belong here. We would just pile them up here because these guys that were living outside for about two weeks, they're not doing so good. They're not doing so well. We're gonna rescue them probably in the next video because this video, I think it is important for us to have the correct placement first because I have no place to work now. Look at this, this is plants. And this is my work table. I have no space. So I need to make sure everything is in the right position first, clear the table before I can do some amazing plant care, some rehabilitation, which is going to be in the next episode. But yeah, today we're primarily gonna be focused on organizing. I'm not gonna show you my organization of these because it's gonna take a while. These are charcoal chunks for my orchids, hello. And then there's some moss poles and things like that. But I'm gonna show you how I kind of style the plants so we have this area here, some of the shelves here are gonna be for plants. So this is what it looks like kind of before. And then when you go into my living room, my crazy living room, I literally just piled everything here. These are plants from our last episode that's gonna be gifted to the neighbors. Some plants there that are going to be swapped. And then I'm going to be styling this shelf, this area over here. And this is the access to the balcony. I have to come up on this. And then there's a sliding door. Hang on, let me see if this will work. Open that. And then, oh my God, open, open sesame, open. <laughs> I'm like leaning forward because there are a lot of things in my way here. So there's the balcony. This is just done. And as you can see, it's a little bit dirty. There's some, I don't know, some construction waste here. So I'm gonna scrub this down really quick. I'm gonna give this a good scrub down. All right, so this is what it looks like after cleaning it up. It's actually my first time up here cleaning up. It's my first time up on this balcony. This is what the view looks like. So I just wanna quickly say that this is Southern exposure. This means that the sun is gonna be hitting us very hard right now around October, December. It'll be very far south. The way that you remember this is that in Christmas time, oh my God, traffic noise. In the Christmas time, when the Northern Hemisphere is enjoying winter, the sun is strongest in the South. That's how I remember it. Because for us living in the tropics, it's very hard to imagine winter sometimes. So the sun is going from East to West that way. And then in the June area, the sun will be that way on the North side. It'll go uh, right to left. So the sun is gonna hit us hard over there. I do have lunch with my parents in about an hour's time. So I have to be quick because some plants are gonna be styled around here. Now I have to be mindful when I layer this area because I'm not allowed to change the facade of the house because this is a new development. I'm not allowed to radically change 
the appeal of the front. So I have to be very careful with what I do. If not, I will get complained by the developer. So I'm probably going to put the larger plants along here where you can't really see it from the street level. But we will see. I haven't really figured that out in my head yet, but there are a lot of plants like this one, the pandan here, that might go outside. So we're going to be doing that in this episode. Stay tuned. And here's what it looks like downstairs. And some of you are saying, why don't you install some railings? Some railings would have been nice. It's not really approved by the developer. A railing would be out of the question. Maybe in a few years time when all the neighbors have moved in, we can all get approved for more modifications around our homes. But for now, that's not a likely thing that's going to happen. That's me. Hello. So this is what it looks like inside of my space. So if I was looking in, uh, it might be nice to do like a little barbecue setup here. I love to barbecue and make some mean barbecue, but I think we don't have room for that. I'm going to start moving things here, but I do have a table in my car that I'm going to try to put up here because that table, I got it a long time ago and I think it can withstand outdoor element. <sighs> oh. Yeah, this looks a little bit weird, you guys. Are looking from inside it's kind of weird to have a table kind of block your view that back there that's probably a public toilet for now for the construction workers but once they move out it's gonna have a clear view of the compound ahead so i don't know how i feel about this table being here in the way of things and i actually have one more of the table I've got one more of this and I'm not sure how I feel about it being here and I don't have any more space for it. Here is the street view if you walk by. It's weird. It's like an elephant in the room, right? Yeah, and it's also probably too big because I mentioned earlier that I do not want to change the overall facade. So the table may have to go. Actually, I, I tried to move it on this corner. Again, that all. Oh my God, something hit my head. This thing, I have to, I'm letting this go as well. My neighbor will probably have it. Apparently one of my neighbors, two doors down, has a film studio, production film studio. So this is way too big. This is 1.2 meters wide. Uh, and I bought it by, by mistake. I'm going to get a smaller one, but yes, it's, it's in the way of things. So I'm in the process of decluttering and making my space more livable, but that looks weird. It looks like it's something trying to peep inside. It really does not belong. So it is going. In you go. Yeah, my car is completely trash. Now I've got to get to lunch in a few minutes. But I think before it rains on us, it looks like it's gonna rain. It's actually not sunny out, but it's hot and humid and I'm sweating. But this is super crazy. So half of this was actually on this side of the stairs, but then they were building this canopy. So I actually moved everything here for the time being. But I think this is way too much clutter for like an entryway. So I only want one row of plants over here. So I'm gonna start moving some of the plants up there. All right, so naturally I'm going to move the bigger plants out here first. A lot of the smaller ones will join. Again, this is getting some direct sunlight, although it is the rainy season, so it's cloudy most of, the, most of the day. This pandan, actually this is gorgeous. It's supposed to be very fragrant and it can get huge and it needs a repotting really badly. We may repot it in the next episode because look at all these aerial roots that is trying to come out. Yeah, and it's very pot bound. It can get massive when you give it a bigger pot. Again, they do smell good and we do cook. I might even in frame. We do cook with this in Southeast Asia. It makes really good pandan chicken in Thailand and some dessert dishes. So this is going in this corner. Although I might want a larger indoor tree back there in that corner, like a chiflera, like a huge chiflera. It's always been my dream to have like that umbrella shaped leaves kind of coming up towards the ceiling over there, but I don't have that yet. So I'm just going to work with this for now. Again, we're going to repot this, but for now, I'm just going to make sure that all the plants have the right place before I can start clearing area to do some serious, serious, serious plant care. Let me see. Do I want this to be leaning? The positioning matters. You want the leaves to face the light where possible, or if it's etiolating the wrong way, you can also have it face the wrong way on purpose so that it can slowly turn towards the light. But I'm kind of happy with this for now. This one is a little bit of a, a variegated look. Let me see, maybe over here. This one's happy, it's putting out like some new vines. 
It's been slow growing for a long time. This is actually a variegated cassava. It's not doing well. It really is not. I meant to check on the roots. It probably dried out too much at some point. I see some mealy bugs, but this is probably going in our care portion of the episode. So yeah, there's, there's some spots, some yellow spots on these. I don't know, maybe chlorosis possibly because I have been under fertilizing all my plants. So it is possible it's like getting very strange tints of green on it. So maybe I'll have this in the same kind of yellow corner here. No, that's weird. Okay. Or maybe in this corner. So I need to be careful with this corner because again, there's no railing. So when the wind comes, we don't want the plant to, to come down, tumble down well, along with the pot. We don't want that to happen. This is a Pachira. Oh, it's tangling. <laughs> this is a Pachira aquatica that actually needs to be cleaned really badly because it's been indoors during the renovation. Beautiful plant. It's nicely braided in the bottom. I don't know if you can see here. It's nicely braided. I want to keep on braiding it, but I don't know. I don't know how I can be on top of this. I, I really, I try to, let me see. I try to braid it a bit, but I don't think it's long enough. But yeah, I actually do know how to braid. I learned that in fashion school, in couture class. There, kind of braiding it, <laughs> braiding it a bit. I wanted to clean these leaves for an episode, for one of the care episodes, because it's so dirty that it will be very satisfying to clean on screen for you guys. But that day is not today. So let me put this somewhere first. We do need to speed up. So we're not gonna be aiming for perfection here today because um, I've got a lot of things to do. So it's just going to be getting plants decently presentable for temporary, for a while, for now. This one can go. Oh. Actually, this might go here. Let me see, do I like it from here, from where you are? It's not that bad. The, we just need a few more plants, uh, like a lower plants, because this is all too high, too much height. And I don't want too many plants to be blocking the view over here. So maybe I might actually adjust this a little bit more. Maybe have the fiddle effect rotated a bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like this better. Okay, I actually want this palm to be outdoors. Sometimes I grew this from a baby. I propagated this from a larger palm from my brother's room in my dad's home. So then I, I, I propagated like a few, like two or three, what do you call this, even like three offsets. And now it's put out a lot. It's very, very heavily pregnant. Look at that. I prefer to have a few on only than to have them grow really big because I know that this is probably very root bound inside and maybe the size will not re get big at all due to the root boundness. But I don't know. This is a pest prone plant. They love, I think some direct sunlight if I'm not wrong. And I think a lot of palms do thrive in full sun, but you do have to acclimatize them. If they're not used to being in full sun, do not stick them out in full sun. They will not forgive you for it. But there are a lot of new growth coming down from the side. This is very exciting. It's been doing really well ever since I moved out here by the stairways. It was blocking people. Like whenever people walk by, they would have to like uh, brush onto the leaves. And I'm sure this plant will not appreciate that. It probably d doesn't like that. So yeah, I might also have to do a, what do you call it? A little clearing here for people to climb onto. Do I want to do that? Because sometimes I may have to climb up from the stairways down below. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. Okay, but first thing first, let's put this in position. I quite like this already and there's actually a little like, I don't know if you're, I'm in frame, but there's a lamp facing down and it's hitting this variegated cassava just right. So maybe it might look good at night. And then there's a Likwala Mapu. It's not doing well. I was under some other plants over the last few months, ever since I moved here. I do need to prune these leaves off and it was constantly wet. I don't, have never seen this media dry out in the last few months. It likes bright indirect light and some people even say it's a deep understory plant so it might like a bit of a maybe not, I wouldn't say low light, but maybe like a lower light situation. But I bet this guy would actually appreciate a bit more light. 
this is a beautiful alocasia but it's it's not doing well it was hidden under many many plants in my in frame yeah but it's it's putting out new leaf already maybe here for now and then i'm gonna start piling up smaller plants over here but i might actually go for that lunch first because i don't want to be late for for my parents i noticed that the plants that we set out earlier it's pretty cute look at that I, it, that's a lot of reflection going on so ignore that the window is dirty ignore that but i like how the, the two sides the plants are just kind of hanging out kind of like psh, this way and then on this side it's like waving over and that's a little bit of that round shape from the fetalistic and that palm over there is creating some really interesting textures here i may want to put some of some, some plant in front of this pendant to just kind of like give it a little bit more layer so it's like a shorter shrubby type plants and then over here what i noticed that is that i may actually have to make a walkway here because i this is the only way to access the balcony so i have to create a walkway and then uh, over there there's the tassel not tassel what do you even call this the thing where you pull down the blinds i've got one on this side and one on that side because sometimes when you want to close the blinds you have to pull it down so I need to make some areas here for me to step on and pull down those chains. It's day two and I'm going to clear the area behind me because I realize I'm going to be coming in and out a lot of this balcony. Now this is still looking too full so I'm going to move some of these plants up on the balcony. Because I moved a lot of plants up there, this space is looking a little bit messy. So I'm going to fix it up just a little bit. I want to keep some ferns in this area. I don't know why there's soil on this ledge. Oh, there's ants. Oh, there's ants over here. Uh, let me see. What, are, what is this? Something died in here. I think this is chili. A chili plant. <laughs> Didn't even know how it got there. I like this peperomia here. Let's move this syngonium. There's so much that I want to prune. I want to prune it so badly, but that's not today's objective. I need to stick to today's cause. So I don't, I don't veer off course because I tend to do that. There. I'm trying to keep this very like a fern area. Kind of like the lacy look as it greets people who are coming by. Okay. There's this begonia that we put out here a while back. It was torn up by the cats, but I want to show you Look at all the new growth that is coming out of it. It's recovering rather quickly, but something is tearing it up again. The cats really love to play out here, but you know what? I don't care as long as the cat is happy. <laughs> I guess this is going to outgrow the cat for sure because it's such a fast grower. I'm going to leave it there. I kind of like the idea of it cascading down the stairs a little bit. It can get really huge, really fast. Now this big rubber tree was in my living room before, but I think it's a little bit too big for my living room. It looks good j uh, for now, but then it's gonna outgrow it very quickly. So I have opted to put a Dracaena there instead. So this is actually good here, I think. I've been liking it here because there's a little window here and it's too slim for any kinds of window blinds or curtains. So this may be a good cover for me because I'm sometimes coming down that stairs in just my underwear. So for those of you who are stalking me, yeah, I tend to do that. I'm gonna move it back a bit. Okay. Mm. Mm. There you go. All right, so here's everybody, and I'm shooting in wide angle lens, so I might look a little bit weird, but I found this cool little pot for this bromeliad. It's a very fast growing bromeliad, and I think it can take a bit of direct sunlight. Looks beautiful over here. And sometimes one of the tips is that you can actually style the pots first, figure out where you want the pots to be, and then you can put the plants into the pots. Like these two, they kind of go together. Let me see. Maybe this. Yeah, this looks really nice in it. Look at that. This is a cordyline, kiwi something, if I'm not wrong. Look at the foliage. It's really gorgeous, isn't it? The color and direct sunlight do bring out a bit of the color. I believe it can take full sun but I could be wrong. And there's actually a line. I don't know if you can see in the video. There's a line here. So there is where the direct sunlight is and this part is gonna be shaded. So this area here may get bright in direct light now, but as the sun moves further and further south in December, this line is gonna move inwards. It may even enter my house at some point. Okay, so there are some ferns here. 
they look very scraggly but give it time this is gonna go really big and bushy and trailing and I wanted to see how these fare in full sun so I'm gonna just stick it on the corner of each of the balcony there's two of these I believe they're the same species this one has actually gotten big before. It's gotten like so huge. But then uh, it was infested by, I think, thrips. So I had to cut it back completely, treat it with neem oil, and then let it start over. And it's already putting out a new frond here. All right, now there's something that I want to do really badly. Aside from pruning this pandan leaf, there's a yellow leaf behind it that is facing the window. But I've been meaning to do this all day long. And let's see if this will work. So this is that Petura aquatica that we have from yesterday. I'm gonna stick it in here. It needed a bit of height. Beautiful, look at that, it fits like a glove. I'm gonna stick it back, back there. So I don't know if I made it abundantly clear, but everything in this area is going to be in terracotta pots at some point. So for these larger plants, I may actually end up having to get some terracotta pots for them. This alocasia here can actually take a bit of direct sunlight, maybe even full sun. So I'm gonna leave it a little bit more forward instead of in the shade because this can provide shade for some of the plants living underneath it. This is a Diefenbachia from our Diefenbachia video. One of the babies. I just randomly chose one. This is not the biggest or the healthiest but I didn't have time to do a whole beauty pageant on them uh, so I just brought one and the rest were pretty much left at the nursery and people can come and pick it up whenever they wanted to. I have announced it on my Instagram. They can pay whatever they want or they can just take it. So it's free for some of y'all. I'm gonna leave that here. They like really, really bright and dark. Like this can get huge. They can turn into an indoor tree. Now then, this is, uh, this is the west. So the sun's gonna hit it really hard in the evening. So let me see, I do want to have some foliage plants over here. There's a pot here that looks really good already. I don't know, let me look. Maybe this one. Now, to be honest, I'm being very frank with you guys. This is not a plant that I love. It's my mom's though. So I rescued this. I don't know, am I, am I even in frame? So I rescued this from my mom's prayer room. It was doing so bad. It did well and then I just left it out in my home, in my rented home, and it really didn't grow much at all. And if you look up close, the leaves are a little bit wrinkled. So this is a Dracaena twister. And I, I just realized it's variegated. I did not even know it was variegated. When I rescued it, it was completely green and it's in so much trouble. So yeah, this is a bit of variegated plant and then it may actually like a little bit of direct sunlight or very bright indirect light. So I'm gonna stick it here. This can actually potentially turn into a indoor tree as well. So it may actually look nice. So imagine like this stem coming up and uh, this curly top. This might look really good. So I'm gonna give it a chance. Leaving it here. It does need to outgrow this bromeliad though because they are about the same height now and I don't really like that. But I have a feeling this will grow because the bromeliad will stay shrubby and short like this. And by the way, this is one that is very easy to propagate. They pretty much flower once and then they will put out all these babies. This is an Acnea gamma sepala. That's the name of it. But yeah, how beautiful is this? This is a very common one, easy to care for. And I have had it indoors and outdoors it didn't matter where you grow this this is such a survivor and then here i think i do want to put something that is like a deep shade but i also want it to look good from the outside from the inside i mean i want it to look good so maybe this one this is the cyanestrum cordifolium uh, i might actually leave it out here a bit yeah there you go now i do have a calathea or a jopertia orbifolia let me see if it looks good here it might be a little bit too low of a light here for it let me see yeah, it's kind of hidden behind it. I'm not sure if I like it. It might look good kind of like parallel to this next to it. Or maybe not. It's like taking attention away. It's too similar. Let me, I'm going to move this on the other side of the balcony. Now moving on to this side, back to that Orbifolia. Let's see, maybe I can have it right here. It's a plant that you can't kind of constantly, am I too close to the camera? It's a plant that you might have to check on often for pests and such and things like that. So maybe that's gonna do well here next to this palm. There's the colocasia. I'm gonna put it in a pot. It needs repotting badly. This is too small for it. I do have one that is downstairs by the landscaped area and I have a video on this. I have two or three in fact down there, but I don't know if they're gonna survive. But this actually likes full sun. So I'm gonna have this here and then stick it out in the front. Yeah, I have too many duplicate plants. I know, I, I'm trying to remedy that, but let's, let's see how that goes. And then this one. This is the Dracaena white aspen. This can also turn into a mini, a small tree. 
I have a feeling it might look good over there actually, but then it can take a bit of direct light. So I might actually stick it, let me see, hang on, this is easy. It can be over here and I'm leaving a, an area here for some plants that can look down. They can trail down a bit. So this is easy and take a bit of direct light. Now here's a pot that I really like, it's got a face. That's why I kind of wanted to put it out here so you can look at people as they're leaving. This is the Schaeffler, Schaeffler, uh, arboricola, I'm going to frame and move it over a bit. There. Really love this look. I kind of want to trim it short so it stays as a small shrub. Although it might look better over there. I'm looking at the area there. See that area in the middle? It looks like it's missing something. So let's see. Let's see how we do with this over here. This might be a little bit too dark for it, but let's see. And they do revert. They're very good uh, light meters. If you give them too low of a light, they will turn green. I like it. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it, but I love it. And this Dracaena can move a little bit back here. Although it is a little bit out of place now, but let me see how it looks behind, from behind the camera. I think it looks fine. It looks fine for now. I, I might find it a better place later on, but we've got to move on. Now I'm just slightly confused with this. It can take direct sunlight. I'm, I'm also looking, do, do you see that empty spot over there? That empty spot over there that looks like it'll fit this because it's gonna get taller. It's all something, a plant that's always growing and growing and the color seems to make sense over there. Video. Delivery. <laughs> now I said I'd put the color cage up front, but I think for now this will do until I repot it. And then there's this plant here. This is the Tenanti or something variegated, but it reverted to green because I put it under a lot of plants in my old home. But the new leaf here, the new shoot here is completely variegated. I have actually weeded out the all green ones already, but this one is still all green. So yeah, when, when you have this happen, you just want to stick it to more light and then you want to take out the all green vines, plants that are not going to give you any more variegation and hope that the variegations come back. But you know what? Based on my last video, because I, I don't love this anymore, based on my last video, if I I should just get rid of it and get a new one, you know, support the local growers and be more happy because I've had this for two years now. And again, I kept it under some plants and it turned green. Now here, uh, I think I forgot what it says, Calicia repens, if I'm not wrong. And this looks, looks to me like it's some kind of Trautoscantia. They do trail, but by the way, they are Trautoscantia in nature. They don't want to hang like this. This is not the purpose of Trautoscantia. This is not. Not, there's no such thing as a trailing plant. I may do an episode on it. These plants are actually trying to find something higher to climb onto, like a tree or whatever, and they will grow roots into them. The plants in nature, they want access to better light, better nutrients. So this is what they do. They don't want to trail down. So this plant, I actually do kind of want to have them side by side because they're a little bit different and I want them to be trailing down. I know I, I know I said they're not trailing plants, but then the problem with them is that you're always going to have to propagate it. You have to cut and stick it back on top. Look at all this new growth because I did that before. So I got this as scraggly plants and if you stick them back, they'll grow bushy and they'll trail down and you gotta keep doing that because they're gonna become bald. Do you see this vine here? The leaves have dried up and fallen off. They will do that for you. So this is a plant that needs constant work, but they are quite beautiful. So I want to see how they look trailing down. So this is what we have here for now. Pretty happy. We may pile on more plants later on, but I do need to work on the back area. It's getting really hot. I don't know if you can see, I'm getting blasted by direct sunlight. And that is the garden down below for a bit of an update. I, don't, I haven't gotten a close-up look, I haven't had time honestly to see how the plants were doing from our previous video, but that's what the entrance looks like. I quite like that variegated papaya, although it is, if you look at it, it's a little bit out of place, isn't it? Maybe the pot just needs to be lower because it's sitting on a tall pot. So I can move that tall pot back here somewhere and use it.
All right, so I shut that door. Finally, we have some AC in here, so it's not gonna be sweltering hot outside. But this is what the view looks like. I need to clear this, so don't look at this now, but look at this view here. I quite like it. And especially, I don't know, do I have a light source at night? I'm, I'm gonna look up. I don't even know if I have a light source up here. Yeah, there is. There's a light bulb up there. I may want to play with a bit of lighting too, some downlight from below, some maybe some solar charge lighting that shoots, you know, that shoots up towards the plants from the outside because there are some solutions for that. I'm gonna do that. I quite like it. It looks nice from the inside too. It should bring me peace. I may actually not even do that many plants here now that I have some that are outside already. So let's see. What, what it looks like here. Yeah, maybe some, some plants, but not overwhelming. Because again, I want to keep my plant care to a minimum. And indoor plant care is a little bit more challenging, although more rewarding if you ask me, I really love it. And here is what we replaced the, uh, the ficus elastica with that is outside. I decided to use that Dracaena instead. I don't know the species name. Comment down below if you know what it is. But it is one that I've been searching all over Pinterest because it is on everybody's living room. And I knew I wanted one, so there's that and yeah this is that ficus that we moved earlier that was in that spot before and it's providing some privacy like imagine me coming down the stairs in my underwear yeah the paparazzi wouldn't be able to get to it with this oh now back to this mess i don't know i feel like taking a short water break because i'm sweating like crazy also i'm trying to procrastinate I'm trying not to deal with this. That water gallon, it should go over here because this is where I press the water, which is where I get my water from. Drinking water, I mean, and uh, I don't even know where to begin. But I think what I'm gonna do is those are in the way, these. So I'm gonna chuck them down below the sink, maybe some down there as well, because when we move, close the nursery next week, when we move out of that nursery, I have some plastic bins, some massive plastic bins that these can go to, and it's gonna be a good way to organize them. But those bins, uh, the girls are gonna need to use it. I'm keeping the girls, by the way. Some of y'all think maybe I fired the girls, like they were became jobless or whatever since I closed the nursery. No, I, I'm keeping them. They're gonna be working on my other businesses. They're gonna be moving to a new location, to a new house. And so they're gonna use those bins to move. After they're done with those bins, I'm gonna bring the empty bins back here to store these items. Okay, so it's actually a few hours later. I started putting these aside just to make way. So this is gonna be sitting out here for a while until I have time to organize them because the plants are a priority now. But something else happened. I forgot I was filming the episode and I just went ahead and started with the organizing, but I realized that there was no way I could show you my thought process in organizing because the last few hours I've been running up and down the stairs, running in and out of the house, and I think it would really slow me down a lot if I had to explain every single thing. But let me quickly tell you what happened. So those uh, gallons of water, they're sitting rightfully here on the shelf. And as you can see, there's actually room here. So there's gonna be some plants hanging out here and they actually get pretty good light. Let me put put the phone where the leaves would be. See, that's really, really good, bright indirect light. But over here under shelves, it's actually more advisable to put plants that are facing one direction, like the band, trailing plants or whatever. It's like this one here, this would be really good here because it needs to only face one direction. But then for a lot of the other plants, like this one would be a very good contender too, actually. This would look good like right here. But I'm gonna, of course, give it a pot and things like that and style it a bit nicer. But you know what I mean. I want plants to be facing, facing that way, getting light. Because a lot of the rosette plants, they don't like to be under the shelves. Because if you have a rosette plant, this is what it's gonna be looking at. It's gonna be blocked. The, like, like the top is gonna be blocked from light and then the back is going to be a wall. So they really, really don't like to be under shelf. A lot of plants, they don't. This philodendron would do excellent in this situation. I'm just gonna give you another example. It's gonna do well right here. See, it's gonna even block the water so you can't really see the water as much anymore. If possible, I'll put it like out here and then maybe a, like a slightly smaller plant down below. I'm gonna be focusing on efficiency in terms of plant care and storage for now because I don't have time for aesthetics. Of course, I'm gonna try to have things look as good as possible. Let me try with this 
this uh, not alocasia, this uh, syngonium, it's not focused, yeah, syngonium. This used to be yellow variegated syngonium, but it's reverted. It's actually got a very waxy texture on the leaf. So I actually really like, like it a lot. Of course, I'm hoarding at this point. So this might look good over here, down below, because it doesn't need that much light. It's not variegated anymore, but it is still getting a decent amount of light if he's I'm gonna squat down. Look at that. It's still getting a decent amount of light. Of course, we're losing daylight now. It's already the evening, so the, the sky's not as bright and I have all these lights on. These lights, by the way, they help with photosynthesis. It doesn't matter if, if it's LED light, grow light, or sunlight. The plants don't really care as long as it's light. That's the reasoning behind this. And I'm gonna store a lot of things behind the shelf. And I'm gonna have some plants kind of sticking out along the shelf front. And then back there, so I, move, I may be moving a bit fast. Sorry for, I, I'm supposed to slow down my filming and things like that, but yeah, I get a little bit too carried away. This is a stromanthi that I got recently. How beautiful, my recent plant purchase. And then I'm gonna have some more behind and then maybe this like something like this, like a begonia. It might look good sitting on the front of the shelf like this. And then up here, I've already got some thirsty plants. So this, these are some ferns. They need to be watered quite a lot. So this is my hose down area, the fern and the staghorn. And then I can actually hose them down from up above on the balcony. I'm gonna do a watering video to show you how I do that. But this is an area for generous watering. And then this is an area with not so generous watering. There's some Diefenbachia. I know we can't really see from down below. Diefenbachia, there's a variegated syngonium up there. So this is gonna be mostly plants because they're getting top light. This is the VIP section. And then the reasoning for this shelf is that these plants can be moved interchangeably from indoors to outdoors because I do wanna style with these plants. For example, this one actually just recently uh, chopped it up and then stuck the top cutting back into the pot. As you can see, this is where we made a cut. It's put out two vines where we made the cut. And then some of the top cuttings are also growing and growing. So this is gonna be a very lush pot of Divanbakia. This is how you get lush pots of plants. In a crowded setting like this, this plant probably will not get big because Divanbakias can become like a tree, like a mini tree. But in this case, it will probably stay small and shrub-like, which I love because imagine like a more full of this, a, ver a version that is bigger and fuller in a nice pot, like in a nice cover pot in the living room or in the bathroom or in the bedroom. This would make such a beautiful pot of pop of color. So I have a lot of all these plants, all these different species, some begonia, some calatheas, that I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be treating this area as sort of their nursery where I can grow them out, study them and things like that. But sometimes I'm going to be styling them indoors. This plant, I don't have the ID, but it's been with me for a while. Oh my God, it's stuck to those begonias. It's a beautiful fern. We couldn't sell this. This was from my store because it's a bit pricey, but how beautiful is that? That's a, a Dioscoria here. It doesn't want to let go. Is it a Dioscoria? I think it was. I think it is. I'm not sure. It's like a weed. But this is beautiful. This would look so nice. Actually, that weed looked really nice. It's not a Dioscoria. I think this is something else. But this is so beautiful. It's put on new fronds over here. How cute. So this will actually look really nice indoors. So once in a while, imagine this as a statement piece on like the dining table with a nice cover pot, of course. I've got actually lots and lots and lots of cover pot. I'm a hoarder when it comes to pots. So something like this that is quite beautiful, that is quite water, quite thirsty, actually. I might actually put it down here. So there's actually a drain behind this. And I do need to check on the drain often because sometimes water may pull over there. So I may actually have to pull these pots out maybe once a month or so and just to clean up the back area quite a bit. But yeah, there's an area there for moss poly. It looks really crazy messy now. I'm sorry. I may have to figure out how to store the moss poles. I guess one of the problem is that it's just really unorganized. Like if you see this colors, different lengths, and you're just like, meh, just kind of everywhere. If I actually organize it, tied it together, have them all face the same direction and sorted them by size, maybe it wouldn't look this bad. But anyways, I digress. I actually moved all the calatheas here, all of them, and look at how sad they have A lot of them died back because they were smothered under the shelf outside in the construction area. It's so dusty. And then they were just piled up outside for like the last three weeks. They are not happy. I think this one might be sunburned. Some of, yeah, I have a lot of rescuing to do in my next episode. They will probably have to be sprayed down with neem oil as well. Even though I did that a few weeks, maybe a month ago, because these guys had a lot of spider mites on them. 
So look at this one. This is so sad. This is so sad, but I'm gonna bring you back to life. But anyways, let me continue on to today's video because I really do need to uh, sort everything out. I've managed to clear some of the tables. I need to get these pots out. I've got a little bit more plants to sort out. So I'm gonna do that off screen and I'm gonna basically show you what it looks like after. Now look at this. This is actually a hosta, if I'm not wrong. How beautiful is the new leaf unfurling? It could be wrong, it could be something else. Comment down below if you know what it is. It lost the one leaf that it had that was hanging on to its dear life. It lost, but then it's put out this in the midst of the construction. I actually kind of underwatered it a bit. So maybe it did enjoy that condition. I was going to bring it out there. As you can see, it's raining outside. I was gonna kick it out there in the rain, but you know what? I might want to grow this in a more controlled environment where it doesn't get rained on every day. Just sweeping the floor, keeping it clean. And this is gonna be so satisfying, you guys. Are you ready for this? All right, this is gonna be good. Oh, that feels so wonderful, doesn't it? And come around, get the rest of it. Finally, I can see the floor after, I don't know how long it's been, but I've got a bit more organizing to do, but I'm so glad that everything is out of the floor. Look at this, so oh, exciting. And off you go. Now I've got like terracotta pots here, there and everywhere. Uh, <laughs> and then there's some on the table. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start moving these up onto the the back of this back of this shelf it was actually there before and it's gonna be pretty hard to dig up when i actually need it but yeah it's, this is the only way that it can go for now because it's quite empty back there Right, and we're done. To be honest, the last time these pots were up here, my ad admin has actually organized everything. She put it up here. But then I realized I probably have a better system. Not to say that she's doing a bad job or anything, but I'm organizing in a way that I can actually see where everything is within one glance so I can like quickly sift through and look at what I have here and I've also kind of stacked them in a way that is easy for me to find them because previously we just stacked kind of like I don't know randomly or maybe because if somebody else did it you don't know what's going to be up there but when you do it yourself you kind of have a clue of what you have and things like so maybe sometimes it's better to do things by yourself and you don't want to stack them up too much as well too heavy because this can really get stuck in inside another pot it'll be very difficult to remove it so yeah this is a pretty decent height for them some of them are a bit dirty but then it's okay it's just potting media and some of them have dried roots on them when i want to reuse them i think i'll wash them because for now i don't have time to wash all of these but yeah i've got actually a lot more this is only about 10 percent of my terracotta pots so i've been cleaning some of the plant care tools look at how dirty it is look how dirty imagine all the leaves all the leaves got dusty and dirty too. All right, there we go. I put them in one basket so they're kind of consolidated into one area. Got this bit of pesticide here. So look at how dusty it is. Oh. This feels really good, you guys, cleaning it up organizing because this is exactly the opposite of what happened in the past month where everything in my life was turned upside down so this is incredibly incredibly a good feeling okay this is going to be very satisfying too hi guys my name is sean and i feel alive again 
finally I have this table that I can start rescuing plants, <laughs> propagating plants and filming some real content for you guys. I literally felt like I had my wings clipped off for the last few weeks. It was like terrible. There was a lot that I needed to get done but I could not get it done. So this, this, this feels amazing. Thank you guys for being with me and I'm really, really grateful. Really grateful to be able to work again. Okay, it's time to move the table back to its desired position. I just realized actually that the last clip that I filmed, that that was actually a pretty good backdrop to vlog. Because there was such a short distance between the camera and the table, I wasn't sure, but now I am. And I'm gonna move this here. This is so people can actually walk around the area I could walk like this to tend to the garden and walk around the table and also the plants over down here can actually get better light because when the table was actually over there for the last few weeks the plants actually didn't get any light at all the table was blocking the light so those plants over there are probably smiling at us right now yeah oh and this hose i i couldn't really hose them down really well because there's like a, a lot of things in the way so i had to like I don't know what's the word for it. I have to like wiggle my way around here to water all the plants and some of them were not watered well. So now I have all this walkway to water the plants. Oh my God, you guys, I'm like, I'm very happy. I really am. This is amazing. Okay, so I've swept this area. There were a lot of dead leaves and dirt on the floor, but there are some random plants. They've been standing here in this position for weeks. I don't know why, I just piled them up here, but we're gonna organize this soon. But I'm gonna quickly cook dinner, and then I'm gonna do one thing. There's a bit of wet spots here. I do wanna sweep this, but you can't really sweep a wet floor, right? So what I'm gonna do is this. Oh my, and I cleaned this fan. This fan was covered in dust for a few weeks. I turn it on. Yay. Look, everyone's dancing. Actually, the plants here, they love to have good airflow. They love good humidity, they love airflow, they love to dry out quickly. And maybe this is a little bit too short. I had it in the highest setting, but I do want this floor to dry up quickly while I cook dinner. I just realized I have more terracotta pots here. I did not know that they existed. I really forgot about them. It is now 8.30 p.m. and I actually mopped the floor, so it's not very clean. But then I have this last bit to just organize and then look at how dry these guys are. I just watered them earlier this morning. But then I guess the conditions here is just really good for them. Good light. So then they drink up all that water. They do all this photosynthesis. Actually, new, a lot of new leaves are coming out. And I'm trying my best not to prune any leaves because that is next week's video where I'm going to be pruning, rescuing, and propagating probably to rescue them. And then treat them for pests, check for things, check for problems. So stay tuned for that episode. But let me quickly gather my last bit of things so these are all endemic plants i have an endemic area that i really really adore some beautiful plants that i'm not really going to vlog about at this time this looks really sad what's happening to you mm, it's it droops quite a lot and then i water oh it's flowering maybe that's why it's flowering so the leaves are looking a little bit sad but yeah it was very dry at some point this is crisping this is actually underwatering. So I may have to repot this into something that holds on to more moisture. And then there are some Lea, Lea amabilis. There's two forms here. And then there's just these two more finicky plant. This is the Stromanthi and then the Calathea white fusion that I'm going to rehab. They do need a bit of attention. That's why they're over here. This one, Calathea, it came from only one leaf. Let me come closer. It came only from one leaf. I think this was the original leaf that I might frame. And then some has sprouted below that. But then, yeah, I need to be on top of this. Also, this is a bit of a bit of a rescue mission. You need to prune. So yeah, that's next week's video. So I'm gonna put this just down here for now. And then I don't know what to do with all these pots, but I am going to actually sleep early. I wanna sleep by, I don't know, 9.30 or 10. If I sh shower now, unwind, maybe organize some of my things in the bedroom. By the time I actually fall asleep, it'll be around like 10 probably. I wanted to start sleeping early so I can get up earlier and then I can start being more productive because for the past few days during renovation, I have been sleeping a bit late because sleepless nights, you know, like I struggle and then I just keep tossing and turning. So I have been having 
poor quality of sleep. I've been waking up late and then not being productive, but that's going to change now. I guess I'm getting my life back and I have all these plants that are counting on me to rescue them. So yeah, and one thing before I go, I'm going to be watering this plant. So that's going to take another like 20, 30 minutes of my time. When I also had a fresh batch of neem oil here and I don't think we should leave them out for overnight. So there's some soapy water, neem oil, and actually a little bit of fertilizer. So I'm gonna spray some, some of these down because they may be a bit pest prone, these calatheas. Yeah, I'm gonna take my time with it. So good night. It is the third morning and I've actually spent two hours watering the plants and cleaning the inside of the house. I also had two workers help me put up some of the paintings and then mop the whole floor of the living room because my mom's coming today. But I'm going to be installing these. These are going to be anti-slip stickers on the edge of the steps here because it's pretty slippery when it's rainy and wet and especially if there's algae on here because I expect there should be some kind of algae action at some point and then there's also these lights that I'm going to install here. I don't have the screw yet because I don't have the drill bit for this size but uh, this, these are going to the, on the edge of these steps and they're gonna light up at night so it, it, in the daytime it will charge by, by solar power and at night it will automatically release energy whenever it gets dark. When you put my hand over the sensor you can see that the light actually does come on on itself so it actually is quite pretty and I don't have to rely on the city's electricity supply to power these lights so I'm really really happy for that. And I've got like a bucket of soapy water, like a rough, a rough cloth. So I pre-cut this into seven strips. I made a mistake of not pre-cutting them in my indoor stairs because these can do well both indoors and outdoors. So I had a hard time installing it and every step was a little bit uneven, but this is such a better idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sticking this onto the steps. It's actually pretty easy to do. And there, that's one. It took like five seconds to put it up. All right, so that wasn't very smart. I was scrubbing it down, but there were so many dirty corners here and some soil over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hose this down, clear all the plants in the area, hose it down, and I let the soil settle in into where it should be. There you go. Yeah, I'm gonna continue spraying this down. I did it. You know how some things have been on your mind for weeks and you couldn't get around to do it. And now it's done. Look at how nice this is now. I'm going to have to rearrange this. I think, I, I don't remember what order the plants were in, but you know what, every time I clean this area, I'm going to have to rearrange the plants anyway, and that is the whole point of plants in pots. Unlike the plants in the pit here, where you can't really move around, but I love the freedom of having to move plants around. I had some sense of areas here along this step before, but I didn't like it. I looked at it at night, and it seems like they were blocking this these, I don't know what you call these, like step lights, flood lights for, flood lights for the feet? I don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna move those Sansevieria's upstairs. You know, I was gonna do the interior in this episode. There's some plants that would look really nice on that shelf. But I think I'm pretty worn out. I don't know about you guys, maybe you guys are worn out from watching as well. So I might save the interior for another episode. Anyways, I probably wanna rehab a lot of the plants first in the next episode, make sure they're healthy before I move them indoors because it's gonna be a lot of fertilizing, a lot of pest control and things like that that needs to be done in a more open area. But I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the three main areas in this episode, the balcony, the front yard, and the backyard. Let us start in the front. And there, this is the new arrangement for now. I'm still keeping that fern theme over here and these ferns are gonna get large. Ta-da! And these will get bigger as well. They'll fill up the space, hopefully. 
There's this little bit balding over there. The alocasia is gonna outgrow its space, gonna get huge. So let's see, it's actually a little bit overcrowded here, but I might do a little bit of a, what do you call this? I might do a little bit of tidying up and just natural selection, just to see which ones of them make it, which ones of them don't. This pilea seems to be doing really well here. And then what else is doing well here? Let me quickly look. This was from our video. And these are full sun plants over here. These are full sun plants. This alocasia needs some help. Look at it. It needs some help. Let it let it free. Set it free. Yeah, it might have to try to unfurl while it was being tied up. So sorry about that. Yeah, it's next week I'm gonna look at each plant. It's gonna be a very long episode and we're gonna be saving a lot of plants. It's gonna be an exciting episode because I really love, love, love saving plants. It is the whole reason why I did my channel. If you watch my earlier videos, it's a lot about plant rescue and even more propagations. So yeah, anyways, I digress a bit. So this is the stairways. This is what everybody looks like. And one thing about this variegated hibiscus, I remember in the last episode a few weeks ago, I filmed and it was like really tall. It was everywhere. And now it's, somebody cut it off, I think. Someone took cuttings because now it's very, very small. Small and something, but look how beautiful this is. Yeah, it's growing, growing, it's a fast grower. But yeah, someone took a massive cutting out of this. <laughs> yeah, and then there's that Monstera over there, statement. And this ficus, I might actually rotate it a bit. I don't like how the ficus is going that way, so I might have it like face us a bit, but I'm gonna do that after I shoot. And I just realized I'm actually not quite done up here yet. But I'm seriously just gonna end this video now. There's some sisters here. So I'm going to be having some trailing plants down here. This is gonna be for Hoyas. I actually made this, do you see that? This is gonna be for hooks, for Hoya hooks. Because I had it temporarily here during the move. And I think I quite like it here. I could enjoy the Hoyas whenever I'm leaving home, I can check in on them. But this is the Hoya that will get a little bit of west direct sunlight. And this here, this is our front area. This is a whole new habitat that I'm excited about. I need to pile more plants on here and I'm glad that I do have some area here for full sun loving plants. I kind of like the Sansevierias there. Oh, there's a toilet over there and you're not supposed to see that. But there, I like what the rows of Sansevieria here actually, I don't mind it. And they can take some direct sunlight and then some plants below that along here. So I like how it's like coming down because I'm not allowed to put really tall plants over here from the street level. We don't want people to see too many tall plants. Let me get closer. This fiddle leaf fig is falling over. I do need to repot it. I need to give it like more soil because it keeps falling over. But this is what it looks like. Quite like it. Finally, we have this area here. It's looking a little bit bare. Again, those plant care stuff, it's going in the back of this. So I may actually find containers to kind of hide them behind the shelf so that they will be, they will not look so messy. Do you know what I mean? And then have some plants in front of it. But whenever I want to access some of the tools and things like that, I will have to remove the plants temporarily. But when you live in a small space like this, it's kind of necessary for that to happen. This begonia is called begonia lady's finger, I think. Beautiful and it's huge. Yeah, I got it huge already and I've propagated quite a bit of it, but it's so, so beautiful here. So yeah, I have some plants over there and then the calatheas that we sprayed down with neem. By the way, I noticed one thing with calatheas. When you spray them down with neem and soapy water, they actually perk up. They really do. They become shiny, glossy, and then they will start having a spurt of growth. So I guess the pests really, really do take a hold of them and then they do get a lot of bacterial and fungal infection sometimes so when you have neem oil on them those are really kept at bay and they really love it so that is one of my tips some of the plants are not as responsive to neem oil but calatheas or you call them japertias if you want to be correct uh, they really respond well to it and then that's some ferns up here and then this green wall here we're gonna be treating them. We're gonna be checking in on them, repotting some of the terracotta pots for next week's episode. A lot of plant saving, plant rescuing. And there's gonna be a lot of knowledge being shared. It's gonna be amazing. I'm very excited actually for next week's episode. But yeah, I guess I'm gonna let you go for this episode because this is running too long. Oh, and one more thing, the orchids are doing well. This is from our first episode at home. It's growing, growing new leaves growing growing this one is growing like crazy they love this setup this is more light than that what they were getting and this is the right kind of watering where i do water them once or twice a day but just 
kind of hosing them down, misting them down, so they dry out in a matter of minutes or even like an hour or so. They really love this setup. I need to uh, let go of some of those dried up plants. But that's next week's episode. We're going to be pruning, rescuing, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end. And I'm at Botanist. If you have any questions about plant care and propagations, I will try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next one. Bye.